Hevra, wonderful to be with you today. It's a delight to be here with Professor Ronit Irshai, who is a senior lecturer in the Gender Studies program at Bar Ilan University and a research fellow at the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem. In addition, she's a member in the board of the Reckman Center at Bar Ilan University and a member of Kolech, a religious feminist forum. Her first book, Fertility and Jewish Law, Feminist Perspectives on Orthodox Response to Literature, was published by Brandeis University Press in 2012, and is now working on two new books. The first examines modern halachic texts in order to show how male and female identities are constructed by contemporary halachic rulings. And the second book, together with Dr. Tanya Tzion Waldux and, and Bana Shagri, um, com compares Jewish Orthodox feminism and Islamic feminism in Israel. Thank you so much for taking time to talk. What are some ways in which halakha or psak has been impacted by male bias? Yes, okay. So I think one of the very good examples for this is um, modesty uh, rulings, Mo modesty halachot, yes. Um, let's just imagine that uh, when a man hear a woman's voice um, and he has, you know, um, very bad thoughts about it or feelings. Now, in every judicial system, there is a balance between uh, values. The, the legal system is trying to balance between two competitive values. Now, the male has a problem. He hears the woman's, the woman's uh, voice, and uh, he feels that, uh, you know, he has um, uh, unwanted uh, 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 thoughts about it. And, but who is asking, according to, to Halakha, who is asking what is the price that the woman has to uh, pay by silence, silencing her voice uh, and without any uh, uh, possibility to, uh, to uh, say it clear and sound. Um, so no one is asking uh, what is the price that women has to pay for the problem, for the probably problem, I'm not sure it is really a, a problem in the male nature, uh, but who is asking what is the price and is it a reasonable price that a woman has to pay for the, uh, for the um, uh, male, for the male problem. So this is only one example and actually here in Israel the, this problem of Kolbe uh, Ishaerva, a woman's voice is nudity, is quite a problem in the in the public arena. Almost every week we have another story about uh, you know um, shows that cannot be um, taken because women are not participating in the army in the public uh, sphere, etc. So I see here that the gender bias. I mean that that because of halacha uh, is totally. Uh, constructed and pub and and uh, interpreted by by men, no one really see women's needs here, and and that's why uh, um, there is no balance between between those two values, supposedly values. So this is only one example, but I I think that I can give uh, many examples examples for this. Uh, uh, just uh, without, I think that we don't have the time to develop it, but just think about fertility issues and the question of family planning and birth control methods. Uh, while the man is obligated by the Torah to uh, procreate, uh, however, when he wants to uh, to study Torah, he's exempt until at least until he finish or uh, uh, to to uh, to study. So his needs, his spiritual and and material needs, are taken into consideration vis-a-vis -vis the halachic uh, the halachic uh, commandment. However, the woman is not. Uh, 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 committed at all. I mean, she's not obligated to, to uh, procreate. It's uh, incumbent upon the man, but uh, she is uh, uh, being restricted uh, uh, regarding birth control methods, uh, the 
space between children and, and etc. So I can't see here uh, the balance between the halachic obligation and the women's needs vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, male halachic obligation and, and the, the balance between his needs or his interests and so on and so forth. So these are only two examples for this uh, gender bias in halacha. Very interesting. So picking up on this last point, in your conclusion of your book on Jewish fertility, you argue that women are mostly seen in halacha as entities for producing children. And I wonder, is this starting to change at all? And, and how might that change? Yes. So I believe it is starting to change. First of all, uh, since we have, uh, in the last decade, it's not more than that, I believe, we have uh, uh, women uh, as rabbis, maharat, uh, alachic advisors, uh, all kinds of, uh, all those names, you know. Uh, but let's say women, women rabbis, poskot. Uh, so they, they've started, I believe, to change the discourse. They've started to put women needs on the table uh, uh, from first um, uh, uh, glance, and and um, and I believe that rabbis uh, that are more attuned to the feminist revolution within the religious society um, uh, have start uh, uh, had started uh, to listen to those to those voices. Take for example the, the new book that was written by Malka Piotrkovsky, a very good friend and colleague of mine. And she has a, um, a very interesting chapter regarding, for example, birth control and family planning. And the, the rhetoric in, in her book is totally different than, uh, than the regular halachic writings of, of the male rabbis. And I see uh, also male rabbis from young generation who are more uh, open to the feminist revolution that are starting to, you know, to... Uh, find new interpretations to the same sources, to the same halachic sources, but you know, uh, the text in itself, uh, the text cannot uh, speak for itself. Uh, it depends uh, on uh, what questions we are, uh, we are asking the text and what are the horizons that we bring to the text. And that's how uh, uh, feminist revolution actually impacted uh, and influenced Young generation, I think now the the, um, the young generation of rabbis are start are starting to change their attitude. I can give um, just a, a personal example that here in Israel um, there is one rabbi. Uh, um, to tell the truth, is the son of a very important rabbi here in Israel, and um, he is in he is a rabbi. Um, in his, in his own right. And actually he sent me uh, his halachic writings regarding modesty, regarding fertility issues, regarding um, uh, sexual harassment uh, from the point of view of halacha. And he asked for my feminist, feminist halachic opinion uh, on those issues. Uh, so obviously he wants to, uh, to uh, take into consideration uh, um, feminist, uh, uh, feminist insights into his halachic uh, deliberation. So I'm very glad, glad yeah, about it. Very, thank you. Um, I'm, very, I'm very optimistic. Uh, so am I. Um, how, how does what you call Akedah theology uh, play into contemporary modern Orthodox Pesach? Yes. So before the, the contemporary uh, Pesach, uh, I think that Akedah theology is very influential um, in the vein that uh, in the, in the in the vein that that uh, according to this theology we should silence sometimes I mean in extreme cases we should silence our uh, moral or ethical um, uh, attitudes vis-à-vis uh, halacha I mean we have to uh, um, to accept halacha even if it's not ethical or moral. So taking this theology as from, from an educational point of view, I think it is very dangerous because what is feminism all about? It's about a moral cry for change and, and, to, and for creating a gender justice for women. So if we say that there are 
as in extreme cases uh, points that we should silence our more moral intuitions, I suspect that it uh, comes uh, to conflict with feminist insights. So I, I, I'm very um, uh, troubled by, by this uh, academic theology in general uh, uh, from a feminist perspective. But Wait, taking so into consideration, just, just, to, just, to, just to give an example yeah, to academic theology, uh, in PSAC, I think that homosexuality is the, you know, is this extreme case that uh, the rabbis can tell those guys, uh, you should, you should uh, sacrifice your inclinations uh, in the altar of halacha yeah. instead of finding solutions. Right. Um, or women sacrifice their feminism or their own expression and the like. For those not familiar yeah. with this idea, um, it's well known uh, someone like Rabbi Soloveitchik and others are connected to this exactly. idea taken by Kierkegaard's term, the teleological suspension of the ethical, that the hero who loves God and serves God uh, su suppresses their ethical impulse, their ethical instinct, in order to uh, have a, a blind commitment to the command um, over the moral. Um, and that plays out um, on the backs of, exactly. of, of Yitzhak or the back of a, of a, of a woman or of a, of, a, of a gay person or the like. So is it possible, exactly. to, be a, is it possible to be a neutral post above the perceptions imposed by gender identity? Well, well this is the, uh, really one of the very challenging uh, questions. Um, but I, I want to... Um, uh, answer by explaining just for a minute what is objectivity according to feminist epistem epistemology. So according to the uh, traditional idea of objectivity, one should like empty himself or herself in order to be neutral and in order to look uh, um, without any inclination uh, on something. And when you empty yourself, you can be objective. According to feminist uh, epistemology, it's not it's not possible at all. So what what is the pref preferable uh, um, suggestion? We prefer that instead of empty ourselves, which is which is uh, impossible to do, uh, not possible to do. Instead of doing, if, instead of not doing that and pretending that you're doing that. Um, you should expose yourself, your inclination, uh, instead of empty yourself, like to, uh, to say everything that you can about, your, about yourself. And at the end, the, the, the point is that in the discourse, in the entire discourse, if men, women, uh, all kinds of men and women from uh, uh, different kind of races, ethnic uh, um, classes, whatever, uh, will be brought into the discussion. There will be a balance of inclinations, and the balance, this balance, will enable us to to, uh, to come to a better objectivity than the the traditional idea of, of objectivity which is not working that's why I, what i want to say about halakha is not that halakha is constructed by a male biases this is true but the problem is the, the problem is not the male bias the problem is that women are not there because women also have, uh, have bias yes uh, all kinds of so if we all will sit in the same table, we will interpret halacha with all our inclination. We will get into a balance at the end. At the end of the day, yes. Uh, instead of uh, uh, you know uh, the the philosopher Flo, I think it was working. He called the judge who is trying to become above his inclination the Herculean judge. I don't believe in the Herculean judge that can overcome all his inclination. I believe that men, women, all kinds of men and women from different inclination, uh, sexual orientation, classes, whatever, ethnic orientation, will come into the, uh, into the discussion, then we are going to have a better objectivity than, than in the traditional idea of objectivity. Very well said. Love that. So my, my, my last question for you, despite all of the feminist critiques of halakha, 
you remain an observant Jew. And I wonder what makes you continue to commit to halakha, even with all of its, all the current challenges? Yes. Well, uh, this is even more difficult to uh, answer, but uh, I want to say um, that I believe that without halakha, there is no Judaism. That's why, because I believe that without um, the, the normative prism, without the normative demand, uh, we cannot uh, hold easy. The, the, the Kabbalah, the literature, uh, Hasidism, uh, all this fascinating uh, um, world that we call Judaism will not last without halacha, without the normative demand. That's why I'm, I'm remaining and I'm uh, glad to remain an observant Jew. However, I think that this generation is our responsibility, in, in this generation, it is our responsibility uh, to transform tradition uh, to a future uh, which have more gender justice for men and women alike, for men and women from all kind of sexual orientation, from all kind of, uh, from everywhere. Uh, and I think that as uh, the Mishnah in Tractate of what says, Lo you should not finish the, the work, but you cannot exempt your, yourself uh, from it. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Professor Ronit Irshai. It was a delight to learn from you. Thank you very much, Rabbi Shmuel.